son of Gilda Armour. Up, my lords! Mutri Ashval, my horse! Pare, la terre, huh? Oh, brave spirit. Yeah, les eaux et la terre. Oui, un prix. There are few. Ciel, que c'est allé en. Ah, non, le constable. Hawk how our steeds for present service nay. Mount them! And make incision in their hides, and their hot blood shall spit in English eyes, and doubt them with superfluous courage, huh? What? <laughs> Will you have them weep our horses' blood? How shall we then behold their natural tears? <laughs> the English are in battle, you French peers! To horse, you gallant princes, straight to horse! Yes! Do but behold yon poor and starved band, and your fair show shall suck away their souls, leaving them but the shales and husks of men. There is not work enough for all our hands. They have said their prayers, and they stay for death! Yeah! Shall we go give them dinners and fresh suits and give their fasting horses provender and after fight with them? I stay but for my greeting. To the field! I will take, I will the banner from a trumpet take and use it for my haste. Come, come away! The sun is high and we outwear the day! Yeah! King himself is rose to view their battle. Of fighting men, they have full three score thousand. There's five to one, besides, they all are fresh. God's arms strike with us. Tis fearful odds. Goodbye, you princes all. Out of my charge. If we no more meet till we meet in heaven, then joyfully, my noble lord of York, my dear lord Westmoreland, and my good lord Exeter, my kind kinsmen, warriors all, adieu. Farewell, good Blue Ellen, and good luck go with thee. Farewell, kind lord. Fight valiantly today. But I do thee wrong to mind the of it, for thou art framed with the firm truth of valor. She is as full of valor as of kindness, princely in both. Oh, that we now had here but one ten thousand of those men in England that do no work today. <laughs> What's he that wishes so? My cousin Westmoreland. No fair cause. If we are marked to die, we are now to do our country loss. But if to live, the few will mend the greater share of honor. Oh, God's mercy, wish not one man more, my cousin. Oh, by Jove, I am not covetous for gold, nor do I care who to feed upon my cost. It yearns me not if men my garments wear. Such outward appearances dwell not in my desires. But if it be a sin to covet honor, I'm the most offending soul alive. Oh, God's mercy, wish not one man more. Because I, not one more man from England, I would not lose so great an honor as one man more methinks we'd share for me for the best hope I have. Oh, not one more, rather proclaim it, Westmoreland, throughout our host, that he who hath no stomach for this fight let him depart. Here, here. His passport shall be made, and his and coins for his convoy be put into his purse. We would not die in that man's company that no. fears his fellowship to die with us. <laughs> oh. This day is called the Feast of Crispian. He that outlives this day and comes safe home will stand a tiptoe when this day is named and rouse him at the name of Crispian. Yes. Yes. He that lives this day and sees old age shall yearly on this vigil feast his neighbors. And say, tomorrow is St. Crispin's Day. Yes. yes. Then will he strip his sleeves, show his scars, and say, these wounds I had on Crispin's Day. Yeah. 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 Old men forget, yet all will be forgot. He'll remember with advantages <laughs> the feats he did that day. Then will our names. Familiar in his mouth is household words. Mm. Harry the King, Exeter, York, Westmoreland, Captains Flewellen and Gower, be in their flowing cups freshly remembered. Yes. <laughs> and this story shall the good man teach his son. And Crispin Crispianus shall ne'er go, go by from this day to the end of the world, <laughs> but we in it shall be remembered. Yeah. Yeah. With you. We happy few, we band of brothers. Yes. For he that outlives this day, he that sheds his blood with me today, shall be my brother. Be ye ne'er so bought. 
this day shall gentle his condition, and gentlemen in England that are now abed shall think, shall hold their manhoods cheap and think themselves a curse they were not here. Well, any speaks that fought with us upon St. Crispin's Day. Bravely in their battle set, and will with all expedience charge on us. All things are ready if our minds be so. <laughs> Perish the man whose mind is backward now. <laughs> you wish not not more men from England, Cox. God's will, my liege, which you and I alone, without more help, could fight this royal battle. <laughs> now! Why, now thou hast unwished five thousand men, which like me better than to wish us one. <laughs> you know your places. God be with you all. Once more I come to know of thee, King Harry, if for thy ransom that was now compound before thy most assured overthrow. For certainly thou art so near the gulf thou needs must be in glutted. Besides, in mercy, the constable desires thee thou wilt mind thy followers of repentance, that their souls may make a peaceful and a sweet retire from off these fields where wretches their poor bodies must lie and fester. <laughs> Who is sent thee now? The Lord High Constable of France. <laughs> I pray thee, bear my former answer back. Bid them achieve me and then sell my bones. Good God, why must they mock four, poor fellows thus? The man that once did sell the lion's skin while the beast lived was killed with hunting. <laughs> A many of our bodies shall no doubt find native grave, upon the which I trust shall witness live in brass of this day's work. And those that leave their valiant bones behind in France, dying like men, though buried in your dunghills, <laughs> they shall be famed, for there the sun shall greet them and draw their honors up, reeking up to heaven, leaving behind their earthly parts to choke your crime. The smell whereof shall breed a plague in France. Mark then abounding valor in our England, that being dead like to the bullets grazing, break into a second course of mischief, killing in relapse of mortality. Let me speak proudly. Tell the constable we are but warriors for the work. Our gayness and our guilt are all besmirched with rainy marching through the painful fields. We have not one feather in our host. Good argument. I hope we shall not fly. <laughs> <laughs> and time hath worn us into slavery, slavery, but by the mass, our hearts are in the trim. Yes. And my poor soldiers tell me that yet ere night, they'll be in fresher road. Or else they'll pluck the gay new coats or the French soldiers' heads and turn them out of service. <laughs> if they shall do this, as if God please they shall, my ransom then shall soon be levied. Come, Montjoy, waste not thy labor. Come thou no more for ransom, they shall have none. But by my joints, which if they will have as I will leave them, them shall yield them little. So tell the constable. I shall, and so fare thee well. Thou never shalt hear herald any more. I fear thou once more come again for ransom. My lord, most humbly on my knee I beg the leading of the vanguard. Take it, brave York. Yeah. Yeah. Now, soldiers, march away. And how thou pleasest, God dispose the day. Yeah.